Capital City is located on latitude 12 degrees north and longitude 8.30 degrees east within the semi-arid Sudan savanna of West Africa, about 840 kilometers from the edge of the Sahara Desert. The ancient city of Kano has largely expanded and developed in several frontiers. The population figure of Kano State as at uh, 2006 was 9,401,288. Uh, uh, the population as at now, uh, as at November 2014, based on uh, the exponential growth rate of 3.36, stands at uh, 12,300,584. It is presently the second largest city in Nigeria. The history of Kano is over a thousand years old. The Kano city walls and gates, for example, were built beginning from the year 1112. The construction was carried out in three phases. Up to date, the Kano city walls and gates defines the capital of Kasar Kano, which was at various times referred to as Kano Kingdom, Kano Emirate, or the capital city of present-day Kano state in Nigeria. Another of Kano's enduring legacy is the Gidan Rumpa, which is the Kano Emir's palace. It is the seat of Kano's prestigious Sarota institution under the auspices of the Kano Emirate Council. The Gidan Rumpa was built by Muhammad the Rumpa, uh, the Sarki of Kano between 1463 and 1499. And he was very important in the history of Kano because he laid the foundations of Kano politics and the society. Under him, Kano entered into the then international community, that means uh, civilized nations who were subject to the, law, the rule of law uh, and a common law which governs uh, across ethnicity, across uh, region and across other barriers. That is a unified law. So Kano, at that time, Rwanda adopted a constitution. Constitution to balance the interests, as the constitution say, the purpose of the constitution was to balance the interests of the government and the interests of the government. Uh, and they call it uh, charging book, that is the crown of relation. And with that constitution, the detail or the main issues of governance were spelled out. How the area behaves, how the area interacts with others, and then the, the rights of the individuals, whether rich or poor, uh, that is the protection of the rich and the protection of the poor. So, can we with that enter into the international community and uh, form an army, an organized army, with an organized tradition and an organized pageantry in the palace to make the area pompous, big, powerful, and uh, some, someone to look up to for protection. And then the system of security work was also established. It was felt out. So these are the major contributions of uh, Muhammad Rumpa. And uh, he was regarded by many as uh, the greatest in India because of these uh, innovations. This magnificent palace is the oldest continuous seat of authority in sub-Saharan Africa and was built over 500 years ago. The emergence of central political authority in Hausa land was replicated in the foundation of Birnankanu or Kano city.
Hausa cities or Baranang Hausa have been the centers of political authority that evolved from farming family groups whose farms were very close to their homes and they were separated by wasteland. The separate settlements are the Kauika or Ungoi, meaning villages or hamlets. Under such an arrangement, authority was either a family or communal. The communal authority was vested in the Emea or Sarki. Over time, the Kano Emirate or Masarota Kano enjoys the solid foundations of early emirs or sarakuna who worked towards territorial expansion of the community and the integration of the different cultures into one dominant culture of kano people or kanawa the most enduring change in hausa land came through the introduction of islam into the area the religion is a complete way of life and made for all times. Therefore, it covers all aspects of life in both the material and spiritual realms. Although the exact time of the arrival of Islam to Kano cannot be ascertained, Bagoda was historically recorded as the first Muslim ruler of Kano who reigned from the year 999 to the year 1063. From Bagoda, the first ruler of Kano up to 2014, Kano has had 57 emirs. 43 of them ruled during the pre Sokoto Jihad period and the remaining 14 after the Jihad. In the course of time, the mantle of traditional authority moved from Bagaudawa to Habi onto the incumbent Sulabawa dynasty. The most acclaimed Sarkin Kano is Muhammad Rumpa who reigned from the year 1463 to the year 1499. He was credited with introducing some enduring innovations into Kano Emirate or Masarota Kano. These include Tarata Kano, which literally means Kano 9. Kano 9 is a council of nine state officials, though modified as of today. They perform, among others, the function of selecting a new Emir or Sarki. Gidarumpa the Kano Emir's palace, which was constructed during his reign. Hawansallah, <laughs> parade of horses or daba during festivities. It is now the most colorful daba in the world. Doakinzaigi, the concept of having spare horses for the Emir or Sarki during battles and processions. a long trumpet which has now become an official insignia of the emir or sarki. Fegini, a fan which is used to provide the emir with fresh air. Takalmunjimana, the ostrich sandals worn by the sarki. And lastly but not the least, Tagwayam Masu, the twin spears now serving as the sarki's symbol of authority. Perhaps the greatest revival of Islamic practices in Hausa land occurred after the 1804 Sokoto Jihad of Shehu Usman bin Fodio. It was the holy war that was fought which helped in reviving the simple living habits and purity of faith of the earliest Muslims through renewed devotion to the ideals of Islam. Right after the successful completion of the Jihad campaign in Kanu, the leader of the movement, 
Sheikh Usman bin Fodio appointed Suleiman as Sarkin Kanu. This appointment marked the beginning of the reign of the Sulubawan Dabo dynasty in Kanu Emirate, at the same time ending the Habi rule. Sarki Suleimanu first lived in Gidam Makama until Sheikh Usman Amfodio granted him the permission to move into Gidarum. The Sulabawa are regarded as cousins to Torankawa who belong to the Wangarawa stock. They were absorbed into the Fulani group, adopting Fulfulli as their language. Today, however, most of them cannot speak Fulfulli. Consequently, the Sulubawas are completely assimilated into the Hausa linguistic group. The personality of the enigmatic 13th Emir of Kano of Dabo dynasty Al Haji Dr. Adu Abdullahi Bayro will ever remain an indelible mark in the history of Kano. He was appointed the Emir of Kano in October 1963 and ruled the ancient city up to his death on Friday, the 6th of June 2014. Al Haja Adu Bayaru, who ascended the throne in October 1963, has been one of Africa's longest serving, most respected, and most influential monarch, a symbol of humility, royalty, and culture. He succeeded his late uncle Al Haji Muhammad Inwa, who reigned for six months. A former Nigerian ambassador to Senegal, native police chief, and member of Northern Regional Assembly, Al Haja Adu Bayaru is seen by many as a unifying factor who promoted peace in the cosmopolitan city and Nigeria in general. His 51-year reign has witnessed all national and regional regimes. The 13th Kano Fulani Emir is popular through his sterling leadership qualities and colorful Salah Daba, a display of horsemanship and House of Fulani culture. The death of Alaja Adu Bayaru is coming two weeks after his return from a medical trip to the United Kingdom. The Nigerian nation converged in Kano to pay their last respect to the enigma that has gone back to his creator. On the 8th of June 2014, the Kano state government announced a successor to the throne. And as discussed already, the council, the Emirate Council, Lord of Civil Law, appointing the new area, has made a sat down, discussed, and required its freedom for them to choose among those that, the, the one that will succeed his uh, Royal Highness, my Emir of Kano, and I will like to Out of those three names, the government chose Zulusalami and Zulusi as the new Emir of Kano. It was an occasion that Kano people have neither seen nor heard for the past 51 years. The announcement elicited mixed reactions with tension rising as well. The spokesman of the Kano Kingmakers, the Sarkimbe and district head of Ambata, Al Haji Mukhtar Adnan, was quick to address the public. Soon after, apprehension was replaced by curiosity. Who is the new Emir? How will the new Emir be similar or different? 
what changes should people expect? First of all, we have the immediate problem of stepping into the shoes of a great man, an Emir who's been there for 51 years, since two or three years after independence uh, till um, a few days ago. Uh, al Haji Adu Bayro was obviously a part of the history of Nigeria, um, and it's very difficult for anyone to step into those shoes. Uh, secondly, we are taking over at a time when there are challenges in the north, uh, peace, instability, um, the um, very poor economic conditions, deindustrialization, joblessness, and therefore uh, there is a need to reform uh, the institution and um, improve its role uh, and its focus on education, um, the economy, industrialization, jobs, uh, because that is the foundation for peace and security and progress. The man, Sunusi Lamido Sunusi. Sunusi Lamido Sunusi was born on the 31st of July 1961. He is a son to His Excellency Ambassador Al Haj Aminu Muhammad Sunusi, CON, who was the Churomankanu, a one time permanent secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the son of the Emir of Kano, Sir Muhammad Sunusi I. Haja Sodatu Andua is the mother of Sunusi Lamit Sunusi, who hails from the family of Limam Galadanchi Zubairu. His paternal grandfather, Sir Muhammad Sunusi I, was the 11th Emir of Kano and the only one to resign as Emir in the history of the Emirate. On the maternal side, Sunusi Lamit Sunusi is from a family of Imams who are of Islamic scholarship of high pedigree. Therefore, Sunusi Lamit Sunusi is of aristocratic and Liman Chiba grounds, a destiny that shaped his character and characteristics as well as manners and mannerisms. The young Sunusi started his early education at St. Anne's Catholic Primary School in Kakuri, Kaduna. He then proceeded to the prestigious King's College in Lagos. By the year 1981, he obtained a bachelor's degree in economics from the Ahmadubello University in Zaria. He served the National Youth Service Corps NYSC in then Gongola State before enrolling for a master's degree in development economics at his alma mater Ahmadubello University Zaria where he passed out in 1984 with a distinction. He moved on to the International University of Africa in Khartoum, Sudan, where he majored in Sharia and Islamic studies. He graduated with a first-class degree in 1997. His work experience took its roots in 1983 at the Ahmadubello University, where he lectured in economics. In 1985, Sunusi moved into the banking sector with Icon Limited Merchant Bankers, a subsidiary of now Guaranteed Trust Bank of New York and Bering Brothers of London. He rose to the position of Area Manager North. By 1997, United Bank for Africa PLC UBA absorbed Sunusi as Principal Manager where he worked in the Credit and Risk Management Division. While there, he rose to the position of a general manager. In September of 2005, Sanusi Lamit Sanusi became the chairman of Kakawa Discount House. Subsequently, he joined the board of First Bank of Nigeria as an executive director in charge of risk and management control. He was later appointed the managing director, chief executive officer of the bank in January of 2009. In that capacity, Sunusi Lamit Sunusi championed outstanding developments in the bank's enterprises as well as its risk management control mechanisms. In June 2009, President Omaru Musa Eradua appointed Sunusi Lamit Sunusi the nation's 10th governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. People just walking into the bank to take cash over the counter. In 2009, 2 trillion. Now, out of this, 86% of the transactions were for less than 100,000 Naira. 86%. 90% of the transactions 
were for less than 150,000 naira. 45% of the transactions were for less than 10,000 naira. People were going to the bank, queuing up for three hours, for four hours to collect 3,000 naira, 2,000 naira, 4,000 naira. And it makes sense. How many Nigerians earn 150,000 naira? A country where 70% of the population lives on less than $1 a day. How many Nigerians can go and cash 150,000 naira in a day? It's less than 10%. That's what the numbers have shown. But look on the right. This 10% that is 150,000 naira and above, the total value of the cash they moved was 1.5 trillion naira, or 71% of the total cash activity in the banks. So the poor people who go for 5,000, 10,000, and who go to borrow and pay 25% are effectively subsidizing the rich ones who go and take 20 million Naira cash, 30 million Naira cash. And for this, the banks have to have armored vehicles. They have to provide security. They have to keep staff. They have to bring the uh, cash for destruction. The central bank has to pay. And the total cost of cash management in the banking industry is projected at 2012 to 200 billion naira. So we're spending effectively 140, 150 billion naira as cost to provide services to people who have alternatives. Because today, every Nigerian bank does electronic funds transfer. Every Nigerian bank. These qualities manifested into the following accolades he has earned. The Nation Newspaper Man of the Year Award of 2009, Leadership Newspaper Man of the Year 2009, Tribune Newspaper Man of the Year of 2010, Vanguard Newspaper Man of the Year Award 2010, and National Honor of the Commander of the Order of the Niger, CON, in 2010. He also earned the Sardona Leadership Award of 2010, Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, in 2010, Silverbird Man of the Year in 2010, and CBN Governor for Sub-Saharan Africa of 2010 and 2011, respectively. Other achievements he has earned are Times of London Global African Central Bank Governor of the Year of 2011 and African Leadership Person of the Year in 2011 and Forbes Africa Magazine Person of the Year in 2011 and, and of course Time Magazine's 35th Person of the 100 Most Influential People of 2011. In addition, Sunusi Lamit Sunusi's contribution to Nigeria's national development were duly recognized with five conferments of honorary doctorate degrees. These degrees include Doctor of Science Corsa by the University of Benin in 2011, Doctor of Science Corsa by the Benue State University in 2011, and Doctor of Letters Corsa by the Bayoro University of Kano 2011, Doctor of Letters Corsa by the University of Jos 2011, and Doctor of Business Administration by the University of Nigeria and Suka in 2011. The icing on the cake was conferring the prestigious title of Dammajan Kanu to Sunusi Lami Asunusi by His Highness, the Emir of Kanu, late Alhaji Dr. Adu Abdullahi Bayro on the 8th of June in 2012. It is with these intimidating credentials that the Governor of Kanu State, Dr. Rabi Umusa Kwankosu, presented the letter of appointment to the then Amajan Kanu Sunusi Lamit Sunusi as the new Emir of Kanu. <laughs>